Houston, all systems are go. Requesting permission to launch. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Airborne Show. It is episode number seven. On this week's show, I was featured on a show called Disney's, which is a podcast dedicated to Disney fans with special needs. Aaron joins me again to talk about D23 stuff on this week's edition of the Air Adventure episode number seven. Here is the Disney's episode. Take it away, Danny. You are listening to the Disney's podcast. For the transportation, I like the monorail, but it's better. Because I don't like the buses. I like the buses, but I don't. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Disney's Podcast. My name is Danny Osmond, and I'm your host for the podcast dedicated to helping you have the best time possible when traveling with special needs to Disney parks, resorts, and on the Disney Cruise Line. I'm so excited to be with you today. Andrew Prince writes the Disney on Wheels column for the WDW radio blog. He's an 18-year-old Disney fan who's been going to the parks, traveling on the cruise line, going to D23 expos, and rolling in run Disney events for many years. During our interview, Andrew shared with me some of the common questions he gets for his blog, how his Disney experience has changed over the years as he's grown, and even shares a hilarious story about how even at Walt Disney World, things can be less than perfect sometimes. So, please join me as we meet Andrew Prince. I wanted to get you on the show and I, and I hope to have you on the show a lot because you've lived the experience of, of what I'm hoping to get out there for people. I think the first question I have for you is what is your earliest Disney memory? It was in uh, 2003, my first trip. So. Oh, wow. Okay. So, and how, how old were you at that time? Three, I think. And you remember that? I don't remember details. I just remember that's what, that's when I fell in love with the folks. Oh yeah. So is it is it like Lou? Do you have a picture of yourself in some really bad looking outfit with bad hair? No. No. <laughs> awesome. So you fell in love with Disney all the way back then uh, when you were three years old. I actually fell in love with the movies first. Ah, uh, okay. And yeah. then went to the went to the park as a secondary okay thing. I think that yeah I think that happens for a lot of people I know um, like I was telling you about my daughter every every DVD we have that we take with us in her wheelchair van is probably a Disney movie and uh, I'm pretty sure yeah I've asked her before I think her favorite movie is Mary Poppins what's your favorite Mine too. oh yeah Mine too. awesome. I think that's great. Uh, great minds think alike, right? Yeah. Cool. So you love Disney. You write about Disney and the parks all the time. Tell us a little bit about the Disney on Wheels blog and how that got started. It really stepped out of, because Lou didn't have a accessible columnist for the, for the site. So I was like contacting him. I met him at one of the D23 one of the D23 expos. After that, I was like looking at it, it's like it's a, it looks for accessible accessible articles, and I noticed he didn't really have, have the archives that I've like to the questions that I wanted answered. So I said, "Hey, I can start an archive for you." So it's kind of like that. That's kind of how his podcast started, right? He, yeah. He says that all the time. And, and for those of you that don't know, it's, it's 
Andrew and I are sort of talking inside baseball here. We're speaking of the great Lou Mangello, the host of the WDW radio podcast. And I know Lou says all the time that, especially to entrepreneurs, and uh, like I was telling you at the Momentum event last fall, Lou says all the time, you know, if there's something out there that you want, go start it because that's one of the greatest ideas for a business because you'll love it and you'll love what you do. And and if it's not out there, you know, go ahead and do it yourself. How long ago did you meet Lou? Two D23 Expos ago. Okay. So that's like four years, five years, something like that. Yeah. Was that the first D23 Expo that you'd been to? Yes. And I'm I'm going this year too. Yeah. To help him with stuff. That sounds exciting. I, I wish I could go. I, I'm already going to be out there twice this summer going to the VidCon, the the YouTube convention, and also the podcast movement convention, which is also in Anaheim. And I figured I, I couldn't, you know, I probably couldn't convince my wife to let me go <laughs> a third time. So you are a big Disney fan besides writing about accessibility at Disney. And we, we found out that your, your favorite movie is Mary Poppins. Give us a story about one of your best moments that you've ever had at a Disney park. Something that just blew your mind. It was actually on a on a cruise, meeting one of the Imagineers. I think was one of the highlights from my Disney trips. So, would you consider yourself a Disney geek? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I am too. And, and I, I know my family laughs at me. I'm probably the biggest Disney geek in my family, which is weird when you're a 39 year old man. But I think that's something I have in common with Lou is that, you know, being an older man, Disney geek, it's kind of weird. You know, someone who likes to go to the parks by themselves and, and just have fun. That's, that's one of my favorite things to do. So the Disney on Wheels blog, you spend a lot of time helping people uh, get ready to travel to the parks, go on the cruise line uh, when they have mobility issues. What is one of the most common questions you get asked from someone who wants to go to one of the parks or go on the cruise line when they have mobility issues? I haven't been asked this question, but I'm sure people are thinking about it. Are they accessible for, like, scooter people or something? It's accessible for normal chairs, but is it accessible with scooter people? And since since I'm not really in a ECV, mm-hmm. I have to um, research because I, I got a question like that from actually one of my fellow team members. Mm-hmm. A couple summers back. Yeah, the ECVs are are definitely popular. I mean, I was telling you about my daughter, who is in a in a chair, uh, not a power chair, just a, a standard chair. But my mother, who is older, uh, when we've when we've gone the past few times, has used an ECV, and that's been an interesting experience. So I can see how that question would come up a lot because you have a lot of people using them. My mom is actually on a cruise right now. She's cruising the Mediterranean. She prefers princess cruises. She She's never been on a Disney cruise. She actually found out when she was asking princess that they have, you know, they have accessible rooms and those rooms yeah, in yes. particular yeah. have doors that are wide enough for ECVs. Yeah. But the other rooms don't. That's as, as far as I know, ECV versus regular chair. Yeah. On cruise line, so... Because that's the type of cabin we I have to get to mm-hmm. cruise with Disney and stuff. Your personal experience with going to the parks, going on the cruise lines is with mobility issues. If, if you're willing to, I, I don't want to ask you to tell me information you don't want to share. But could you first share what your particular mobility issue is or your diagnosis I have a cerebral palsy. Okay. Not as severe as your daughter, but... How much time are you in your chair versus some sort of like a a gait training device or or walking device? Not that much. Okay. So you're mostly in a chair? Yeah. Okay. How old are you now? 19. Okay. So you're 19. 19. So yeah, I've been been at this for 
while now. Yeah. Yeah. So you graduated from high school last year, right? Yes. Awesome. Maybe tell us, because I know, at least with my daughter, my daughter's nine, so you've got 10 years on my daughter. But even at nine, our experience at the parks has changed with her. Even when she first went when she was six years old. And even in three years, our experience has changed as she's gotten bigger, uh, as her chair has changed. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was like when you were a little kid versus a teenager in terms of accessibility? Versus now. So yeah, versus now. When I was um, little, they were able to tr- transfer me into, into regular ve- mm-hmm. ride vehicles and... Now I'm only restricted to the ones that, except my uh, mine train and uh, those rides that I really want to go on. <laughs> so you make them transfer you for the awesome rides, right? Yes. Yeah, that's cool. I would. I'm sure my daughter is gonna be wanting us to do that too. The major change you're saying was with was with transfers. You're you're not able to be transferred as much now. Yeah. Okay. That's one thing I would love to see Disney do, and and I I'm, I bet they will do for when they are able to is is to develop ride vehicles that accommodate chairs. Well, I, and I mean for new rides, uh, like yeah, I would have expected that Mine Train being a new ride that they would have figured out some way to to tie down a chair or something into one of those vehicles. Yeah, I would think so, but they didn't. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you've paid attention and um, seen some of the articles about some of the research they're doing to come up with tie-down systems for airplanes, for wheelchairs. Have you seen that? I haven't really paid attention to the to that per yeah. se. They're researching that now, and if they can figure out a way to tie down a wheelchair in a plane they'll be able to figure out how to do it on a roller coaster <laughs> eventually. Or something. Yeah, or, something. Yeah, or yeah. something. Where do you guys live? Ohio. Okay, so you're in Ohio. So when you go down to the parks, where do you guys stay? What's what's your favorite resort and why is it your favorite? For the transportation, I like the monorail monorail resorts better. Yeah, we do too. Cause I don't like the the buses. <laughs> I like the buses, but I don't. We discovered this last trip because we actually stayed outside the park. We're DVC members, but we had a week with a, another timeshare company, RCI. So we um, we used that. And we discovered that you know if you have a wheelchair van or if you have a disability placard or license plate, that valet parking is free at the resorts. So we were able to drive in and have lunch at the Grand Floridian or the Contemporary or something like that, get free valet parking, and then you just hop on the monorail. And so it was almost like staying at a resort because it took us maybe 10 minutes to drive from our hotel to a monorail resort. And that may be something that we use more in the future. It was, it was pretty cool. I think we also want to uh, try out the boardwalk uh, at some point, because that's just such a fun area. And my kids really love Epcot right now. So of the monorail resorts, which one is your favorite? DVC side of um, Grand Floridian. Oh, yeah? The DVC side. Yeah. Because it's, theme- it's themed to Mary Poppins. Oh, right. If you haven't been. That makes sense. If you sense. haven't been to it. No, that's that's actually our home DVC resort. So, yeah, we love it. The The fountain in the lobby with the penguins is pretty cool. Okay, so before we finish up, I do want to find out if you have a funny story, you know, a funny story that only a family like yours or a family like mine would find funny about traveling to Disney World with accessibility issues. It was actually on one of the ones that we we have to transfer for, the teacup ride at uh, Magic Kingdom. So you're brave. I I don't ever go on that. (laughs) That's one I can't handle. They only had out of like one key for both the accessible teacup mm-hmm. and to operate the ride. Yeah. One key. It broke inside the teacup. Uh. 
<laughs> so, so you, Andrew, you broke the ride is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's good. So, uh, so all those all those guests that were there that day can can blame Andrew for breaking the teacup ride. And how long ago was that? A year and a half ago. <laughs> that's funny. So they only have one key. Hopefully, they have two. Since Do you think they would? That that reminds me of that story that that Alice Davis tells about how you know they only wanted to give her enough money to make one set of costumes for the pirates ride and she lied and and asked them for more money because they didn't know how much it would cost and made two sets and then when they had the fire she had the two sets so that's what they need is they need an imagineer like that thinking about all the rides well hey if we have an accessible ride vehicle we need two sets of keys because what if the key breaks then nobody else with a chair that day will get to ride it well, Andrew, thank you so much for coming on the show and thank you for being really honest about your experiences. And I look forward to having you back on future regularly because you definitely know what it's like to go to Disney on wheels. Hopefully with Lou. Yeah, we can get Lou. You have to let me know like next time you guys are on a trip down there because I try to get down there pretty regularly and maybe we can do a live review of something accessible with Andrew and Lou. That would be fun. Yeah. Thank you, Danny, for letting me be on the show. If you're seeing this. Since our last recording of the show, I have some sad news to report. One of Walt Disney's original Imagineers and his right hand man, Marty Sklar, has passed away since the last recording. Marty Sklar was a Disney legend, and he even has a window on Disneyland's Main Street, USA. Now, back to our exciting programming. This week, Aaron Andrew talks about his. Thoughts on the Star Wars Hotel. Take it away, buddy. What's up, AR Prince Podcast? We are announcing the Star Wars Hotel, the unveiling of a new futuristic experience not known to this world that we live in. That's because it's brand new and nothing like it has ever been done. Andrew was there at the convention, WDW to experience it live and uh it's pretty neat who's gonna go there first and can give us a feed we'll find out back to you andrew thank you for watching join us next time thanks to ricky dj tech madrid aaron intruder and all my production assistants Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button below this video and turn on notifications by clicking that little bell that shows up. You're still here? Here's a blooper from this week's episode, and just forgot to record a episode in between my busy schedule. <laughs> um, so here is an episode for you. Take it away, guys. No! <laughs> I'm trying to be professional here. Hello, welcome Hi. to the Andrew Show. My name That's is Andrew, and I'm annoying. Hello, and my I'm name is Andrew, and I'm a what fan? Yeah, I'm wow, you sounded just like him. Woo! <laughs> yeah. How are you making your voice travel like that? Give it up! I'm going to hit you. Stop it! I'm going to die! Did you see he's trying to hit you? Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Please stop taking it! Please! Mission control. 16 items.
Spaces bar group. Spaces bar group. You are currently on a group. To interact with items in this group, press Please control. Stop touching. Oh, there are three of you. How many of you are there, Andrew? There's five of you. There's five of you. Oh, there's five of you. 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 To interact with items in this group, press control. Now I know how to get out of this. You don't. 